Hey, how's it going, guys? My name's Harry, and today we got Mr. Gribbly. All right, we're back here again with another AMA Hello. asking your community questions, guys. And today, this is our 14th AMA. How do you feel about that? I feel like that's pretty great. That's a lot of AMAs. <laughs> that's a lot of that's, AMAs. That's almost 15 AMAs. Jeez, yeah, we're almost at the milestone of 15 AMAs, guys. Thank you guys yeah. so much for submitting your questions. And let me ask you a question, Mr. Gribbly. How do you feel about scary rooms in Rec Room? I think they're spooky. <laughs> 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 That's how I feel about it. Yeah, I, I, as I, long I, as there's nothing scary mm -hmm. like right behind me or anything, Harry. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. There's totally, totally nothing right behind you or anything. Nothing scary. Yeah, I'm good, right? You're good. Yeah, I'm, don't worry. I'll protect you. Our first question comes from the Terrorblade42. They ask, "Are there any plans to changing the new UI? The colors of scheme, the, like I like the color scheme, but lots of the us aren't happy with the 3D buttons that were removed. We'll probably have to keep up the new UI because of performance optimizations." So could we have 3D new UI schemes? Yeah, okay, so uh, so the, well, so oh, <laughs> this creepy sorry. bear keeps laughing at me, it's yeah. terrifying. So yeah, the question is about the new UI that we've been working on that you can see when you interact with the club section of the watch. Um, and yeah, it's currently very flat, and so certainly, especially if you're using it in VR, um, it feels a little less fun and playful than the, than the current watch where you've got 3D buttons you can press. Um, so the answer is yeah, we have some plans to, to add back a little bit of the depth and stuff that we have in there. It won't be exactly the same, mm. um, but we want to make sure that you're getting kind of that nice feeling of pushing a button, the depth and parallax uh, when you're using the watch in VR. So we have a plan, um, you know, hard to predict exact timing, but I would say over the next month we're going to hit that. Um, okay. Certainly we want to kind of uh, make an improvement there before we roll out the new style uh, more yeah. broadly across the watch, because that is the plan. The plan is gradually we're going to replace pretty much all the ui in the game with the new style oh, wow but yeah we definitely want to you know that's still it's still a very kind of early version of it it's working across all the platforms in a way that we like the performance is great it's easy for us to build and iterate on it um but yeah we want to make it a bit cooler on vr um something that's been that we've been working on is actually adding some sound and adding some animation to the new style so yeah you you can expect to see that slowly but surely uh getting better as we add more polish to it oh that sounds great that's really exciting to see so stay tuned for that, guys. All right, our next question comes from... <laughs> I wonder this room is legitimately scary. <laughs> questions comes from Ashton12006. He asks, when will Laser Tag get some new maps and weapons? Ooh, that's a big one. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. Not sure. I mean, we're not yeah. really planning on adding anything to Laser Tag. Okay. Um, you know, we kind of like, we, we like the maps that are there. Um, you know, I guess it's possible we'll do one, but it wouldn't be this year. Um, okay. The uh, we we do have a bunch of game stuff that we're we're getting, thinking about and working on, um, but yeah, not laser tag. So mm. appreciate that you like laser tag. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it, but yeah, we're not we're not planning to add anything to that uh, anytime soon. Okay. Thank you so much for the question there. All right, our next one is going to be from uh, the big fellow thirty two. He asks, "What do you hope to add or finish before twenty twenty ends?" That's a really huge question. Ooh, ooh, yeah. the big the big fella 32 the big fella 32 yeah all right thank you big fella 32 um <laughs> hmm that is a really good question so we've been doing a bunch of planning or you know what we want to do for the for the back half of the year um so let me start with a couple of the the more kind of housekeeping things so you know we've been last couple of amas i've been saying this and i'm sure everyone's sick of hearing me talk about it but we really are hard at work on upgrading the version of unity that we're on mm -hmm. um so we definitely definitely want to land that um you know, not just before the end of the year, but very soon. Soon, soon, soon. That's, that's yes, going to happen. Like, we're guys. getting real close on that. Um, so it'll be, it'll be great to roll that out. And then we've been talking to the team about uh, doing a little bit of cleanup. You know, it's been a while since we've kind of gone through and squeezed out some of the bugs. And, um, you know, there's, there's a few kind of like, uh, you know, hitches and performance glitches that we'd really like to get to. Um, so we'll take a look at that, do a little bit of cleanup. Um, you know, uh, that, and that'll be coinciding with, with rolling out the new engine. Just, just kind of, you know, do a, do a light bit of housekeeping here, kind of neaten and straighten mm -hmm. things up a little bit. And then we have a, we have a ton of stuff actually that we're, that we're doing. We got a couple of, uh, of kind of game rooms that we want to roll out. Oh, wow. um, I think we've talked about in the past, uh, we've been doing a kind of an update to charades and we've, yes. we've made some really good progress there. Um, and so that work and, and bring that out. And then I'm not allowed to say anything specific, but we are kind of thinking about what the next game is going to be. Okay. Um, and we have a pretty specific idea that we've cooked up, but I'm not saying <laughs> anything more than that today. Oh, that's uh, really exciting. Yeah, oh thanks for the question. And then, yeah. and then you know, we've, we've got a bunch of other stuff uh, ongoing. Um, but yeah, that's that's. I think those are the big ones. 
there's some really fun stuff with the uh, with the avatars coming real soon. Oh, really? That again, I won't Ooh. say too much about, but I but I know the team's been hard at work on on some very cool features there. And thank you. Oh, so much interesting stuff. But yeah, but I think those are the big ones. I think those are the big ones. Getting up on the, on the Unity engine, yeah. new charades. So there's a really game that we're thinking about, um, and you know, and that'll come with you know, like Stunt Runner did, um, like uh, uh, the the last paintball map did, Sunset Drive in. That'll come with a bunch of creation tools and props and new fun things for people to build rooms with. Um, so yeah, lots of fun stuff coming in in the next few months. Cool. All right. Our next question comes from uh, TLC LOL. He asks, can you speak on the specifics on what is preventing the most upvoted feature in Quest Uncanny? The level cap increase from becoming reality. Is there a logistical way challenge or do you just feel it is the right time? Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. Thank you, TL LOL C. So unfortunately, there is a logistical challenge, and mm -hmm. that is the kind of just ongoing incompetence of Bboz. Oh, um, right. <laughs> he's just terrible at his job, um, and unfortunately, that just prevents us from doing anything cool. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, Bboz. I don't mean it. I spoke to Bboz about this, and it's really more the it's more of the timing thing. Mm -hmm. Like he's actually got a bunch of things he wants to do. Um, he's trying to kind of get it all to land at once. So he, so he kind of said it's not the right time. He understands that there's a lot of demand for it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, great question, fair question. Um, and uh, but yeah, just not quite the right time. He's he's got a plan, but um, but I'll let him speak about it. More a timing thing than any kind of logistical, you know, reason we can't do it. And I was just there. kidding about people being incompetent. I'm sure. I'm sure. Don't edit out the part where I said I was kidding. Oh, I'm gonna be in so much trouble. <laughs> was it yes from Rec Room? Yes. How well do you holding hands feature that is planned work? Oh yeah, that's, oh, a, that's a really yeah. Question, interesting question. Interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Forever Summer Sky uh, started working on that um, a month or two ago, mm -hmm. um, and got it working. So, so the idea is it's kind of like um, uh, a cross between a handshake and kind of a, a, like a, a permanent connection between two users, like we in between like grab each other's hand and yeah, like, like they'll this. stay connected and you can like move around. It's super cute. Uh, I know that we ran into some pretty big challenges. It's actually kind of really tricky to get it to work in a natural way. Um, you know, like getting the hands to like not behave in a crazy way. Because mm -hmm. like if you're holding my hand, I can kind of move it around all crazy. And what do your hands do? And so it got kind of got kind of complicated. But um, <laughs> but yeah, so that that kind of works on the back burner until we figure out how to do some of those some of those complexities. But it is a super super cute prototype. It's so fun. You can you can hang around. You can like you know sit and watch the fireworks, hold hands. It's very cute. Yeah, it's really amazing. We've seen a bit of videos yeah. on it, and it's like amazing. So, look, look really fortunate seeing that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, surprisingly complicated to, to get it to work though. Oh, I can't imagine. By the way, Harry, happy yeah, 4th. yeah, happy Fourth of July. Did you have an amazing Fourth of July event this weekend? I had a pretty quiet Fourth of July. You know, like yeah. uh, you know, we we mainly we mainly had kind of a quarantine party at home. Right. You know, we we, we we did manage to see some some fireworks nearby near our house, which was nice. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Mainly just a quiet one at home, but uh, how about you? Yeah, for me, I just basically walked down the street to get get some steaks and just kind of enjoyed <laughs> watching fireworks <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> That's pretty there much it. <laughs> hey, but it was, YouTube it was, firework totally counts. It was pretty much just streaming inside rec room and just, you know, watching fireworks at home, and it's amazing. So it just kind of brings the community together, especially during quarantine. Yeah. We really don't have much to go anywhere, but we always have a place for a rec room. So it's awesome. Happy 4th, everybody. Yeah, happy 4th, everyone. I hope you guys have an amazing time with you and your friends and family. Can I tell you a really stupid story? Harry? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This, I, whenever I think about stuff like this, I think back to like one of my one of my earliest memories I have is uh, is my mom, who, mm -hmm. I, who has played Rec Room with me. She's been in here and we've, we've played Rec Room. My mom's great. Um, but she was a heavy smoker when I was a kid. Like mm -hmm. she would smoke cigarettes all the time. And so I used to make like spaceships out of Lego. Oh, and what I would uh -huh. get her to do, I would go pester her to light a cigarette, and I'd be, "Mom, can you light a cigarette?" And I'd be like, "Okay." <laughs> and uh, and then I used to like open up my spaceship a little bit, oh. and I'd get her to blow the smoke into what? my spaceship, and then I would close it up, like put the put the bricks back on, put the brick flying my spaceship around, and I'd crash it into something, <laughs> and when it exploded open, all smoke would come out like what? it was an explosion. That is so cool. Oh, you know, that's that's actually pretty imaginative and really creative in a way too. <laughs> The funniest part was that all of my Legos uh -huh. stank like cigarette smoke. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I can't imagine like how long it would take to take the smoke uh, smell out of that. Uh, yeah, I was a little bit of a pyromaniac as a kid, but yeah. now I'm a very responsible and mature adult. Encourage everyone to <laughs> save yeah. kids. Be save safe. kids, stay safe, stay safe, kids. Yeah, that's really I cool. encourage everyone to play with virtual fireworks. Much safer. oh, way much more safer, guys. Make sure you guys do that in rec room, please. Next question comes from Jeff zero seven seven three four. He asks, "What is coming up for the next rec room original content? Will we see anything soon?" 
Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, yes, you will see something soon. So, like, yeah, definitely what's coming up next is uh, charades. You know, so we've, we've been doing a revamp of charades. You know, so it's not going to be, like, completely brand new or anything like that, but we are kind of upgrading it a bunch. We're making it so that uh, players on touch devices and screen devices can play, and we have a mm -hmm. very, very cool new venue uh, oh, that man. two venues yes. take place in. Um, plus some other little fun features planned for that. So stay tuned for that one. That's, that's going to be a refresh of charades. Um, and then we do have another kind of game that we're planning, but I'm not allowed to say anything about it. I'll get in real trouble. So yes, you, hopefully we'll be able to say something about that soon. Oh, oh wow, this one's a long question. Are you ready for this one? No. Uh, a lot of questions are in this one, but maybe we can split it up. Our next question comes from, comes from our crispy chicken nugget. Mm. He asks, okay. okay, so I have a couple questions. Uh, he asks, one, is there going to be any instruments such as pianos or guitars? Our chicken nugget has asked us like 19 questions Oof. in one. Yeah, this is one's this has right? seven So let's do, let's do them one at a time. Let's hammer through them. All right, instruments. Okay. So uh, the answer is maybe. Um, so as, as a bunch of you will know, we've been working on this Circuits V2 feature, and we've actually started to roll out previews of that and have people test it with us. Um, Circuits mm -hmm. V2 is super, super cool. And one of the key things it does is it makes the response time of circuits much quicker. Mm -hmm. So the current circuits are kind of like, you know, a little bit sloppy in their timing. And so like if you pre if you have a button that triggers a sound effect, you kind of press it and it comes out like, you know, 10 or 20 milliseconds later. It's like mm -hmm. not quite right. enough for you to feel like you're in control of the timing. Circuits V2, one of our design goals was to address that and make it so you can do a thing and it happens immediately. Um, so it makes things like instruments much more possible. Okay. But I think we would do it in the context of like, we'll give you the circuit tools and the, and the creation tools to create Ooh. your own instruments as opposed to we're going to just make a guitar and give it to you that kind of thing yeah that's really cool. but yeah i'd like i you know i love uh, i love music rooms in rec room i love it when people do dj sets and 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 you know make music in all mm -hmm. various ways um so really excited to support that hey, uh, thanks it's fun it's a bit it's a, that's <laughs> huge fun huge fun for me and i, I love mm -hmm. chatting about all the music stuff with people so yeah, yeah. anytime people want to talk music i'm around we talk love it music Especially of seeing all the covers people be making. Oh, amazing guys! I love it when people do covers of the. Mm -hmm. the yeah, there was one on the Reddit the other day. Someone doing the uh, the pirate brawl song on the piano, which was yeah, awesome. That was so. I remember, cool. we had a player called uh, <laughs> Loka Force a while back who did a lot of the crescendo music on the pipe organ. Oh, like on an actual cool. real pipe organ. That was crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If anyone wants to do covers, I always love to see them. That's really fun. I promised Emily Waffles uh, that we would do a music event in her uh, in her club at some point, where maybe we'd go over some of the, <laughs> you know, how some of the music was created for for some of the games. That's so cool. Yeah, we can't wait to see that because we yeah. especially, I feel like the music is really such a huge uh, part of Rec Room, so we'd love to see that. Yeah, be good, be a good event, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that I know the clubs folks are working on uh, on supporting events a little better in clubs. Yeah. So maybe we'll wait for that, and then we'll do that as one of our club events. All right, number two, he asks, would there ever be something like a party chat or options on turn off voice roll off distance for your party? You like how we're getting through these really quickly? We're really nailing it. All right, so party <laughs> chat and voice chat. So there, yeah, so there is uh, mm -hmm. roll off controls in custom rooms, and there is you can actually turn on. And there, so right now, if you wanted to disable the roll off, so you could hear a party, you know, mm -hmm. from across the other side of a large room, the other side, use the walkie talkies to do that. Oh yeah, um, okay. But yeah. Um, other than that, yeah, we, so we're actually been prototyping internally uh, some, some other upgrades to the to the voice chat system, mm -hmm. um, which will make it a little more pleasant, which will make it in a uh, room with a lot of conversations going on. We're doing a better job of kind of like rolling off and occluding some of the sound. So we're doing mm -hmm. some upgrades there as well. But yeah, play with the walkie talkies. Our, our third question comes from, will there ever be a trigger zone or a off, was it out of bounds area for both players and AIs? For example, a goblin pushes you out of the bounds, you will be teleported to the either the start or where you you got KO'd. That should be possible with the existing UGC tools. So, um, okay. yeah, you can use the invisible uh, collision. You can use the trigger volumes. You've got the spawn points. You should have everything you need. I know it's not always the simplest, you know, to, to figure out the circuitry. Um, but if you go and join uh, one of the creation clubs and go meet some creators who will help you with that, um, mm -hmm. you know, you should be able to do all of that stuff right now. Yeah, that's so awesome. Make sure you guys Unless check out I'm the, misunderstanding uh, the question, which is always possible. Oh, yeah, no. If you guys ever have any questions, make sure you guys check out the Rec Room Discord. There's a lot of people willing to help out, especially the support team, yeah. too. Are melee weapons going to be fixed, or are they going to damage you on a, a hit? Good question. I'm actually not aware of what this issue is, but I'll go mm -hmm. talk to the UGC team 
uh, and make sure they're aware that maybe there's an issue with melee weapons. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you so much. All right. Our fifth Do question. Do you have any melee weapons I could try? I can. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ow. I heard that was a question okay, from you. the comments. Hey, it worked. Someone asked in the comments earlier on YouTube saying, is punching illegal in Rec Room? Is punching know. illegal? Well, it's, I mean, so I mean, yeah. look, the, the law of the land in Rec Room mm -hmm. is, uh, is the code of conduct, right? Yes, so, right. I think we would have to go to the code of conduct and see um, you know, is it specifically outlawed? No, it isn't. Mm -hmm. Punching is legal in rec room. You can punch the uh, dummy in the dorm yeah, room or in the rec center. Mm -hmm. You can kind of punch each other, but you know, and like, but if you know, and if you don't want to get punched, you've got your ignore bubble. You can set that up. Or bubble, you can set up. You know, set it up so you can't even get near me, Harry. So good luck. Exactly. Oh, now I know. But now yeah, I know. But no, it hmm. is. It's. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know. I guess it depends. There is a level of punching which could mm -hmm. rise to the level of disruptive trolling. Right, right, right. So if, right, you know, right. if someone's telling you like, "Hey, I'm really, really sick of you punching me," mm -hmm. you know, listen to them and give them some space. Yeah, exactly. Right, uh, guys. But no, punching's not illegal. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that. And sorry for the uh, off-topic question there, but that was part of the, uh, that was part of the uh, YouTube comment. Number five <laughs> question: is, is there any way to adjust the fire rate, damage, or range of May weapons? Uh, not really at the moment. Yes, yeah, so that's a good question. So, um. I'm trying to figure out the right level of evasion for this mm. answer. Uh, so no, not stuck with the, the default weapons. You can sort of do some very basic custom weapons using the existing circuits. Um, circuits V2, again, you know, like similarly to the musical, it's like you want that kind of like much faster response time. We want, you know, b building custom weapons is a goal of circuits V2 as well. Okay. And then there is something else that we're working on should really help with not just building custom weapons but we're building custom objects of all types um okay but i don't want to go too deep into that we're sort of like right in the middle of a bunch of discussions and thinking so i don't want to make any promises that i'll regret um but it's definitely something on our roadmap is is make it more possible to build higher quality custom objects that you can then share and put in your rooms and blah 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 and so yeah and and making custom weapons would be an example of that okay all right thank you so much for that question at number six, he asks, will there ever be an offline mode in for Rec Room? Ooh. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, something we've talked about a fair bit. So an offline mode for Rec Room. So this is, you know, particularly interesting for like, if you're putting Rec Room on your phone, for example, and like, you know, and you go through a tunnel or, you know, whatever, like you, you lose your, your network connection for a while. It'd be really cool. Like, I think the way it would probably work is we would support an offline creation mode. Right? You could like, use the maker pen you could build stuff you can save your room and then next time you're online it'll and then sync that room up to the server obviously you need an online connection to do anything so to right. um, do anything multiplayer so it would probably be pretty limited but we're i think the main thing we'd be interested in is supporting like if you wanted to be offline you know if you didn't have wi-fi or whatever but you just wanted to do a bunch of building yeah um, that mm -hmm. would be the main thing we'd want to let you do Everything else, Rec Room is so fundamentally multiplayer, the way everything works, it's kind of hard to think of what offline would be. But for creation, yeah, that's super interesting. Would there be a knockout system added to the explosive items? Heck, maybe even being able to do a rocket jump. Rocket jump, ooh, <laughs> that sounds funny. Oh yeah, so so <laughs> I, uh, so I, I, I mentioned this to, the, to John, he saw this question, a Radiant Blur, our, our, yeah. our game lead. And, um, and yeah, he, he got super excited by this. He thinks it's a great idea. Um, so I don't know exactly how he'll, he'll, where that'll, how that'll end up manifesting in the game, but we love the idea. <laughs> so thank you for that suggestion. That's so cool. All right. Thank you so much for the questions there. Crispy chicken nugget. All right. Yeah, fake it, Harry. Could just be like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially we have, we have flying now. We can, <laughs> there you go. Just use your imagination. Man, uh, this is such a cool, like, really cool room. Uh, maybe like this. Oh, that, maybe that's we cool. We need to get the cars in. Get oh, yeah. This is awesome. Yeah, totally. Oh, here's, here comes one. <laughs> I do that a lot too. I'm a big fan of flying cars, Harry. It's one of my favorite oh, yeah? things. Yeah, when I like, have you ever seen the movie The Fifth Element? Oh, classic movie, but it's been so long since I've seen that one. That's a classic good movie. movie. Great flying mm -hmm. car. Blade Runner. Great flying car. Oh, Blade Runner. Yes, risky of that. Ever since I saw it with a future yeah. Back to Future Part Two, I'm like, I want a flying car. Oh my gosh. Yeah, what, I think the cool. second or third Harry Harry Potter movie. One of the Harry Potters has mm -hmm. a flying car. Oh yeah, remember that? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you, yeah, you you do mm -hmm. know your stuff when it comes to flying cars because I'm. Oh, I know my flying flying cars, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Our next question comes, comes from Save the God. He asks, lots of people are complaining about Rec Room crashing and freezing. Lots of it on PSVR. Are there going to be any plans for attempting to fix this? Yeah, okay, thank you for the question. And, and yeah, sorry for the crashing and the freezing. I know that can be super annoying. Um, and I think, you know, this will be a, something of a repetitive answer because I've said this in previous AMAs. Um, we're upgrading Unity. Um, you know, we hope that'll help a little bit. We don't expect mm -hmm. it to be a magic bullet and just like overnight, you know, yeah. everything's smooth. Uh, everything's smooth. 
uh, is it unlocks some new uh, possibilities for us to optimize the game a little bit. And like I mentioned before, we're definitely taking, making it a bit of a priority over the next month or so to do some cleanup work, just for the most annoying mm -hmm. hitches and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, apologies for that. You know, I think, um, you know, Rec Room's a pretty uh, busy and involved game on the PS4, you know, so we, we sometimes do have memory challenges and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we know it's annoying and we'll do our best to kind of clean it up over the next month. Um, but yeah, please keep, uh, keep pressure on us so that, um, so that we always are inspired to fix it as much as we can. All right. Our next question comes from the Gibby school. He asks, kind of a dumb question here, but in the far future, will there be a different paintball team colors like green and yellow? I just want to say thank you for all the hard work guys, you guys been building in rec room. That's really cool. Oh, Hey, thanks. Well, thanks for the kind words. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. Um, I spoke to the game team about that and, and they were pretty committed to like, Hey, you know, I, I, they really feel like the, you know, spirit of paintball is red team versus blue team. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so no plans to support custom colors there. So I think paintball, at least for the foreseeable future is always going to be red team versus blue team. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I think, you know, we're like, all right, that's kind of really well established at this point. You know, if we were to ever do it, it'd probably be more like something like cyber junk, yellow and orange. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, but yeah, no plans to do that. I, but appreciate the question. Yeah, thank you so much for the question. Yeah, it's classic red and blue. I've always like loved those. Classic color. red and blue. They're two of the best colors, Harry. Yeah, red and blue. Oh, what's your favorite color, by the way? People got to know. Gripley, what's your favorite color? Is it is it purple? Wait, green. Is it green? Oh, dang! I thought that was purple, but it's green. Okay, cool. No, no, I know. Like, well, if uh, you know, if there was a green version of these glasses, I probably would have picked them last mm. first. Like got dressed up in rec room but i've been wearing these purple glasses so long i don't feel like I can yeah them, you know it's, it's but, your... but you know but if but if you tell me your favorite color green green's your okay now we know guys Just, now we know it, it's such a cool color it is a really cool color plants trees mm -hmm. plants trees apples baja blast <laughs> no no i can't, can't say that i can't say that no it's See? not sponsored not sponsored by the way <laughs> <laughs> all right our next question comes from the cool terrorist guy. He asks, has there ever been an on a fixing several stunt runner exploits that have been plaguing the leaderboards? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so good question. I spoke to Rai guy a little bit about this cause okay. you know, he did so much of the course design, um, for, for stunt runner and, um, you know, and has kind of like keeps an eye on the leaderboards and all that kind of stuff. Um, when I asked him this question, he kind of like, started crying and was like, oh. I don't know. <laughs> um, and he got all stressed and like made oh, me feel no. guilty. And so I left him alone. So I think, I think he's kind of scratching his head about the best way mm -hmm. to handle it. Like, cause I think, yeah, it is like a balance of like, you know, people find exploits and, and there are reasons why the courses aren't meant to be played the way they are. Um, but you know, we want to keep the leaderboards consistent. So I think, you know, really what we need is some kind of like ability to reset the leaderboards while keeping you know, the previous version. So it'd be like, hey, you know, did the best, but then we fixed a few exports and we're going to reset the leaderboards. Um, but I think Rye Guy needs to do more thinking there. Mm. And yeah, he got really stressed and started crying when I asked him about this one. Oh no, oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm kidding, he didn't really, but but I know he's I know he's like scratching his head over the best way to, like scratching his head over the, yeah, but thanks for the question. We'll keep talking to him about it. Um, but yeah, I know, it's, I know it's kind of a tricky problem for him. Next question comes from RR underscore Chase. He asks, when are we gonna get new shapes for new shape tools? We've been having the same basic shapes for a long time without any additions. When we see a, a hollow shape or a cutout tool, also when, when can we see a terrain editor, like grow and hmm. smooth tool? Hmm, wow. Okay, all, all good questions. And um, right. like, uh, again, you know, I wanna be really careful about timeline because mm. you know, th there's a team of people who need to work on it. I don't do any actual work, Harry, as you know. With that caveat of like, you know, I don't, I don't wanna say anything, uh, you know, too specific. Um, mm -hmm. I know that uh, several of those things are kind of like being actively c planned for like uh, on the canny and stuff like that of like top requests that we're kind of like dusting off and look like planning to look at over the next few months. Probably not everything that was on that list, but mm -hmm. a couple of them. Oh, that sounds really uh, good. So sorry for the vagueness. I'm just trying not to like commit the yeah. team to something, you know, based on me just making some wild promotions. And I know we're actively thinking about um, actively thinking of those things uh, very soon. I, I Fallen Ninja, he asks, after the Unity update, do you think there will be any port to remaining, was it Rec Room Originals, Oculus Quest, mm. apart from Rec Royale? Yeah, so Rec Royale, very, very, very unlikely to happen. We kind of took mm. another look at it not so long ago. And um, yeah, just that that piece of content was just not built with the Quest in mind. Yeah. With, mm -hmm. And I think, honestly, sad to say, it's kind of true of Bando as well. It's just kind of like those uh, those those maps were just not built with the, with the Quest 
uh, perf restrictions in mind. Mm -hmm. um, they're more, it's more likely that we'll figure out a way to get them to work. And I think, I think probably here's what happens on those. Probably we need to get on those is like version to get really weeks away now. Um, and so we want to kind of get that out there, make sure everyone's running on it. That'll allow us to be like, all right, let's run a new profile on this and see how close we are. Um, but I think, you know, if I was a, a betting person, you know, if you wanted to put money on it, I would say mm -hmm. that those, those outstanding Rec Room originals probably won't make it. Sorry to say. Well, there you go. I know people are very vocal about that, but you know, but there's always a new update. Yeah. And I understand. Uh, look, we, we want it, yeah. we want it as much as you do. Uh, the team is, you know, like I've said so many times in, in, in AMAs over the years, the, the Rec Room team is truly, truly incredible the game developers. Mm -hmm. Like one of the most amazing teams that I've ever had the privilege to work with but they are not magic some of this content was just built without you know awareness of what the constraints were going to be and it's kind of just there's just no real way to go back and magically make it work unfortunately like if we did nothing but port those things we could probably make it happen but we got a bunch of other stuff that we we want to do yeah unfortunately it's it's it, it's very unlikely that we'll bring that to the quest you know so so something that we've committed to internally is that mm -hmm. anything that we build new will yeah. be on every platform always so, yeah, so there exactly. won't be any future stuff that doesn't come to the quest absolutely so that's actually a really positive thing to look forward to so stay tuned for that guys all right our next question comes from nancy yes are we ever going to get bug fixes for dodgeball we'd have to look at what the yeah. actual problems are we know dodgeball is like it, it was one of the very first things that we built for rec room mm -hmm. and we're still kind of like you know learning the right way to do the networking and stuff like that so Dodgeball can be a little bit janky, especially if um, you know people have slightly slower internet yes. connections or something like that. The catching can get really hard. It can be a little funky. So that aspect of it probably isn't going to change. I think we'd have to kind of fundamentally change the way Dodgeball works to improve that very much. And I think you know we just got other priorities that we that we want to focus on. Um, if there's other bugs that you know have cropped up that aren't just the kind of general networking jankiness of, <laughs> of dodgeball yeah. um then for sure we want to fix those um but yeah mm -hmm. but if it's just like hey it's kind of like you know a little bit funky when you're trying to keep it little times and stuff like that then um yeah that's probably just how dodgeball is crazy fun it's not the mm -hmm. it's not an esport it's it's a it's a crazy fun through things right. with each other game yeah our next question comes from four point emerald he asks are there yeah. any plans for the design team to create a multicolor or color changing items as in the item you buy once and can have it set to a different color per outfit yeah there we go it makes me think that we, should, we could do like a uh, a mood shirt that changes oh, yeah. color based on your mood mm -hmm. uh, um uh, so yeah, so I don't, I don't think there's any plans for a like manually color changing shirt or, or like that or, or, or avatar item, clothing yeah. item. Um, I know, you know, the way the, the art team, the, you know, some pretty clever things they do to get all the color schemes in there. I know the, the pride items that we did recently, like oh, yeah. uh, were very colorful and mm -hmm. got a lot of color in there. I'm not aware of any plans to like make them individually colorable though, no. All right. Our next question comes from RR underscore werewolf. He asks, Will there ever be a just an update just dedicated to fixing the game, breaking bugs, and patching up old Rec Room's originals? What bugs? <laughs> we were no, just talking okay, about, right, talking I mean, about dodgeball uh, earlier too. So yeah, so we uh, so in the AMA, um, you know, in as we, as we roll out the upgrade to Unity, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've definitely been talking to the teams and just kind of saying, hey, it might be a good time to clean up some stuff. Um, so people are kind of taking a look at their backlogs and kind of like spending a little bit of time prioritizing bug fixes and cleanup. So. Yeah, I think over the next month you'll see uh, you'll see some pretty significant cleanup. Comes from Dragon okay. Rat Tiger. He asks, with Circuits version two, will there be a V2 variants of existing V1 circuit gizmos, the timer chip V2, the animation chip V2, and will we have to wait longer for some of these V2 circuits, or will all most be included day one? Um, so I think it's more like they'll kind of roll out over time. Like we're yeah. definitely taking a kind of a beta approach to the rollout of circuits V2 because mm -hmm. we want to make sure that they're very stable and they're very reliable and that, you know, when you build something, it keeps working. So I think we're going to roll it out piece by piece. Um, so yeah, it'll take a while for circuits V2 to catch up to everything circuits V1 has. Um, and I don't have an exact timeline on that, but it's not going to be just like, bam, you know, here's circuits V2. It's, it's a direct replacement for everything in circuits yep. V1. It'll be more like a gradual crossfade over time with mm -hmm. circuits v2 getting more and more capable um and ultimately circuits v2 will be able to do a lot more than circuits v1 but, does. but you know for the for the foreseeable future because you know because there's so many rooms and cool things the circuits v1 system's not going anywhere mm -hmm. um you know i think it's 
you know, I don't know exactly when or if it would get removed, um, but you know, for the for the for the foreseeable future, the the two systems will be available in parallel. We no, are, no, all your all your existing circuit stuff will just keep working. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so maybe we're worried about that for the contest stuff, but yeah, exciting news. All right, don't worry about it. Our next question comes from Newland, mag is a magician and programmer. He asks, in the Maker Pin palette, will we ever see custom colors for something like RGB color picker and use Maker Pin shapes, props, and other recoloring objects? Sometimes the standard maker pin colors can be very limiting. Yeah, yeah, no, it's absolutely so. So, um, yeah, we definitely have a pretty, uh, you know, a pretty careful design around how color is used in mm -hmm. Rec Room. Um, and so, yeah, we want we're trying to hit a balance of obviously to be able to like you know build whatever stuff they want and express any idea that they want, but we're trying to make it so that you know Rec Room has a pretty coherent look. You know, so any room you go to. Um, you know, even though it's, it might be, you know, it might be an outer space world or it might be Maurice's bedroom or mm -hmm. it might be whatever. Um, there's a kind of consistency to the visual style, you know, so the way we choose shapes, you know, there's a very careful sort of bevel that's, uh, that's applied to them. And the, you know, the very specific values of the colors, um, are kind of there for, to provide a consistency. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's a lot of thinking that's gone into making sure those colors show up right, you know, under the different lighting conditions and under the different types of materials that you can use. So there is a lot of method behind the, the the limitations and I know it can feel a little limiting and um, we're definitely open to kind of, you know, expanding out the possibilities um, as we go along, adding more materials, adding more colors. But I think we're, we'll probably never do just a full on enter like RGB values and you can just absolutely arbitrarily pick any color for those reasons. Like A, I think, you know, and what we want to just have a little bit more consistency in the look across all the different rooms um, than that would allow. And then and also because of like the different lighting conditions, the different materials, there are ways where like if you just pick an arbitrary color, it can it can really show up very, very poorly. And mm. so we'd rather kind of like make sure that we give you a palette of colors that if you pick one, it's going to show up well under all the different conditions. Um, so it's kind of a bit of a balance. I know it can feel a little limiting and we're definitely open minded about if there's specific colors you wish you had, make some noise about it and we can definitely expand the palette. But I don't think we'll ever go to just absolutely freely choose whatever color value you want. It's we're, we're trying to Goldilocks it here. You know, there's feel like there's, you know, obviously there's not enough freedom, you know, if you didn't have any colors or right. know, only three colors or something. And then there's kind of too much freedom where it's just like, hey, you just literally pick any color. It just, it, it makes it too easy to create things that, that don't render well and they don't preserve the look of, of the game. So we're trying to hit that sweet spot in between. So I uh, appreciate the feedback. It's a really, really good question. All right, our next question comes from Slippy McBacon. He asks, what about the maker pin material that changes color depending on the team and the person holding the object? Oh, okay. Ooh, huh. That's a really interesting idea. I don't think I've really thought about that one before. Yeah. Uh, seems like that could be useful. Um, I'll, I'll make sure that that kind of goes to the uh, to the creation team, and they can put it on. They can think about whether they they want to support that. Feels like the kind of thing that we uh, that could be very useful. Um, so, yeah. yeah that, that, let me give you a hard maybe on that one. Yeah, I can't say I ever heard of that question before, but thank you so much for the creative idea. No, interesting idea. Yeah. Thanks, Slippy McBacon. Time at two. He asks, why aren't support members allowed to enter the contest? It seems like they win every time. It's kind of like discouraging to enter, knowing that it definitely seems biased. You could also implement a rule that you can't win contests back to back to make it more fair. Members of the support team are not allowed to enter contests. Mm -hmm. That's already a rule. Yeah. Uh, I know we did have a kind of a bit of an edge case recently where there was someone who started a contest mm -hmm. um, and then we brought them onto the support team halfway through the contest. Mm. And there was a big discussion on the kind of moderation team about like, eh, how do you handle that? And ultimately, I think what we decided there was like, because it was a team of players who were entering the contest, it was sort of oh, unfair yeah. to disqualify the whole team based on that one person. Um, but I can understand how that might've felt like a bit weird. It, it, that one's a gray area, 100% agree. But the rule is, um, yeah, people who work for, you know, for Rec Room who are on the support team are not allowed, are not allowed to enter contests. That is mm -hmm. the rule. So there was that kind of weird edge case, but generally speaking, that doesn't happen. Apologies if it feels that way, but yeah, yeah. No, we, we agree. Uh, it's not fair to have the support team entering the contest. I absolutely, I definitely agree on that. There's been some contests like video contests that, that I want to enter, but I'm like, oh, there's no way because uh, that'd be kind of like really cheating. And also, you know, if I was to stream that on my on my streams or something, yeah, that'd be totally unfair. But yeah, come on, Harry, a little bit better than that. <laughs> last question for the last AMA. Are you ready for this, Gribbly? Let me think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, he's ready, guys. Okay, our last question comes from Random Redditor 404. He asks, with the massive amount of underage players, was it non-junior accounts, the community is getting worse by the day. Are there any plans oh. on dealing with this issue? Hmm. 
Um, well, okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear that that it feels like the community is getting worse. Random Reddit or 404. Um, you know, obviously, we hope that's not the case. We work hard to try and make yeah. that not the case. Um, you know, with with uh, junior accounts, um, yeah. I mean, just I'll say what I always say: if you if you encounter someone who you think's underage, um, please report them. You know, we need them on a junior account. Um, mm-hmm. We really care about that a lot. Um, in terms of the community getting worse, so obviously I hope that's not true. We do monitor various kind of metrics and uh, and things, but you know you can't always get everything about community health from a metric. You know, some of right. it is just like, hey, what's the kind of encounters you have? Um, you know, and as you know, rec rooms, you know, we're adding more players every day. Um, you know, and so sometimes you know when we get a lot of new players coming in, uh, some of those players are not as familiar with the code of conduct and and the kind of spirit of positivity and welcoming. Uh, you know. Uh, community that we want to have um so you know a i encourage you know the veteran rec room players you know we really appreciate when people kind of uh you know really teach newer players you know what it means to be part of the rec room community what it means to create a fun and welcoming environment for people from all walks of life um and then on our end of things um you know we you know very specifically right now we're definitely opened up to uh to bring on a bunch more rec center mods um mm-hmm. so i know there are you know currently spots open if people are interested in becoming a moderator um and then yeah and then you know we're also working on improving the moderation tools for rooms so that room creators uh, have more tools at their disposal um to moderate their rooms and kind of set the tone that they want um i know a lot of the rooms do a really really great job of this and kind of really yeah. do a great job of maintaining their communities so yeah, so you know, it's an ongoing, uh, it's always an ongoing challenge when you bring a lot of humans together from all around the world, there's definitely gonna be some friction from time to time and we, we wanna do our best to minimize it. We encourage everyone to like understand the code of conduct and and, uh, and really, you know, live by it um, and use the reporting tools, you know, when people are getting kind of rowdy and, and, and breaking the code of conduct and making it so it's not welcoming for everybody. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's what I can say about that. Apologize if it feels like there's, you know, if the community's uh, not not meeting your standards, but um, you mm-hmm. know we're always 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 striving to make it better, and we please you know we really really request the help of everyone who plays the game to uh, play, to live up to the code of conduct, to use right. the reporting tools, and to hold us accountable to to you know for maintaining the very positive community that we have in community. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you for the criticism. Very fair. Absolutely, and thank you. And, uh, and again, if you guys want to reach out to us, there's always a link in the description in the video. Just put it on the screen right here. Right, right down there yeah <laughs> well thanks again so much for the questions guys it's uh we always are happy to hear from you guys in the community and i just want to say thank 100%. you so much gribbly any closing thoughts on the ama today uh no it's, hey always a pleasure to do it with you harry uh thank you to everyone for playing thank for everyone for being thanks to everyone for being a part of the community we we love our players we love that you play rec room we love that you create and that you hang out with each other um, we're we're always inspired every day by by what we're doing wow, and the amazing things that you build and share. So um so thank you to everyone. Um and yeah, please stay safe. Please stay safe. Yeah, please stay safe, guys. Take care of each other and uh, wash them hands. And uh, and again, guys, <laughs> <laughs> wash them hands. Wash them, wash yeah. them hands. And uh, yeah, my name is Harry, and that's Gribbly. Thank you so much, guys. And remember, yeah. please make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe for everything Rec Room. When we'll see you guys in next AMA. Let's do a socially distant social high distance social distance vibe. Responsible high five. Respons- oh, I felt that. I felt. I felt it. <laughs>